My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to start doing more of these physicky bits. We're going to try and break all this down so it's really easy to understand. So, today we're talking about inertia and momentum. What is the difference between the two? So this is all to do with that crazy bastard, Isaac Newton, he started all this off the fucker. There were other ideas before that, but he was the, basically the one that basically made sense of it all. Um, so that's why we have a part of classical mechanics and um, what's the word now? Newtonian physics, that's the one. <laughs> and why force is Newton's and so on. Which kind of tells you a bit before we even get into it. So in basic terms for those guys who, you know, fucking can't remember any of this or didn't even do this. Inertia we can basically say is mass the mass of something now that is not weight so <laughs> it is not weight weight is basically what you experience in a gravitational well so on earth on mars on the moon weight always changes where the mass of an object unless you chop it in half doesn't so mass in a sense is how much stuff and when we say stuff, we mean matter. And when we say matter, we mean atoms, basically. Oh, um, hadr hadrons <laughs> and baryons and blah, 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 blah. But anyway, let's cut that shit bit out. So yeah, so inertia is about mass. It's not the mass. It's how much stuff there is matter, which is basically atoms, the stuff you have. So inertia is the base, how can I describe this? If you have a ball and this is steel, it's a steel ball, this ball, and let's just, the weight thing, let's just say it has a, a mass of one kilograms. Um, this ball will require force to move it, to change its velocity. So let's say its velocity is zero meters per second. That's wrong, fucking hell. <laughs> zero meters per second, there we go. Its velocity is zero. This is what we call the rest mass. And we have to apply a force to this to accelerate it, to basically change this velocity. So we want this force to give it a, um, Oh, fucking hell. A change in velocity over time, change in time. This is basically equals an acceleration. Um, so we need to uh, force, we need to apply forces to move stuff. The more mass something has, the more force is required. Now this is obviously basic stuff. You try and push a lorry or push a beach ball. So it's inertia is its resistance to move. What is important here is in it's also it's um, it's a vector quantity, which basically means that you have to apply a force to make it go that way. If you want to make it go another way, you also have to uh, apply a force because it will resist doing that. If you get, I was going to say a ball, but if you get a conrod <laughs> and you fucking leg this out of the ISS, or maybe you go into interstellar space, wherever, and you chuck that rod in space, this rod will continue to fly through space forever until something affects it or the um, half-life of protons makes it dissolve after trillions and trillions of years. But yeah, you throw it and it'll carry on going until something either gets in its way or applies a force to it. Um, it will just continue to go, as long as it doesn't hit anything or go too close to stars or whatever, because of gravitational wells and all that kind of shite, it will keep on going forever and you have to apply a force to it to make it change direction. Now you might think, well, this is all basic. Why did this guy, have, why did Newton have to write all this stuff down? Well, because, um, you know, it's like when you spin something, it will eventually slow down. So why is it slowing down? Why is it changing velocity? Why is it accelerating? It's slowing down. 
Um, because obviously something, air resistance, uh, gravity, and uh, the, but the gravitational load is basically forcing it into its bearings, which is friction. And friction and stuff like all these parasitic losses, that's why it loses its speed, um, loses its velocity. It starts to accelerate, which is slowing down. And uh, so you can tell there's a force acting upon it. If you know that things should just carry on going the way they're going, that's something spinning is um, rotational inertia, which we'll get to. So what's the difference between this and momentum? So... Now it's time for ice cream. Or maybe some nuts. A cool glass of orange. Why not try a hot dog? Or the real thing, a cool, refreshing Coca-Cola. From the sales staff and in the foyer, now. Right then, so, if we look at the equations of these things, let's put an arrow on there. Inertia is basically the force that we require to move something. And that is our mass times our acceleration. Because it's an acceleration because we can't just instantly go from 0 to 10 meters per second. We have to go from 0 to 10 meters per second. So that means that there, in the velocity there is a change over time like so all is wonderful absolutely great so basically inertia is the resistance to want to do this and that is related to its mass and then how much we are trying to accelerate it when we look at momentum momentum is mass times our velocity oh i should put a little times in there just to make it clear for people uh, our velocity now our velocity has a vector our force has a vector. All these, and actually acceleration has a vector as well. These are all vector quantities. Um, vector meaning that it has to have a direction. It can't just be anywhere. So when we look at these, momentum is, um, it's the quantity of motion basically. Oh, fuck you now. Can't write anymore. Quantity of motion. It's not the best description I know, but it will do. Um, so let's just take two things, for example. Let's just say we have a block here that weighs 50 kilos, kgs, and we have another block here that weighs 20 kgs, and we are moving them along, so we have a vector, at 20 meters per second. Can you see all that? Only just. 20 meters per second like so so what this means is if we look at the equations above our mass is higher for this one than it is this one so we are going to need a lot more force here to accelerate this up to 20 meters per second that's our inertia bit because it's heavily dependent on mass and the acceleration well the acceleration we're trying to go from 0 to 20 meters per second so there's our acceleration. So if the if we want to go faster, um, if we want to accelerate to a higher speed, then the force is going to be bigger. If we have bigger mass, then the force is going to be bigger. Same with this one here. If we look at them, this one has less than half the mass of this, so the force required is going to be less. When we look at momentum though, on the other hand, now we have a block that's 50 kilos going 20 meters per second so it's our mass times our velocity which means that our momentum our p here is going to be a higher quantity than this block that's 20 kilograms going at 20 meters per second you know this you know if you have a motorcycle or a scooter going 50 mile an hour into a brick wall or you have a bus going into a, a brick wall you know one one deep of bricks 
the head's gonna knacker the wall maybe a bit and make make uh, maybe make a few bricks fall over and stuff. The bus is just gonna fucking smash all the way through it. That's because the momentum of the bus is a lot higher because its mass is a lot higher. However, on the, the reverse side of that, in re relation to inertia, is that the, the moped weighs fuck all, you know, literally on the scale of weights, fuck all is really quite low down there. Um, and you only need a 50cc engine to push it to just say 30 miles an hour, where a bus, you're gonna need a big heavy diesel three litre jobby to push it to that same 30 mile an hour. So you need a lot more force, if that force is torque or not, it doesn't really matter, you can, you can push it <laughs> with something else. Um, so this is the big difference between the two. When we get to engines and stuff, we are talking about, when we're talking about the actual engine, we're talking about rotational um, inertia and, and uh, rotational inertia and angular momentum, which we'll get to, um, because they are a bit different. Um, it's not as simple as this, let's put it that way. And uh, when we actually get into a motorbike going across the surface of the earth, then we're basically back to all this linear stuff until we start turning corners. Then we have to get back to angular momentum and rotational, um, not rotational, not rotational velocity, uh, inertia and momentum, basically. Um, so this is the difference between the two. One is how much uh, force do you require to accelerate a mass? The other one is when that thing is moving, how much movement does it have for its weight if you get what i mean basically you can basically work out the energy this is the this is the energy required to work out how much energy you need to push something let me start that again fucking hell inertia is the amount of energy you require to push something momentum in a sense is the amount of energy something has once it's moving now people get people think about um kinetic energy potential energy stuff like that these are actually energy values where momentum um, momentum and energy are very very closely related through um, <laughs> through uh, conservation of momentum and conservation of energy stuff like that we'll talk about conservation of momentum because that's quite cool um, because that actually does um, relate to engines and stuff and all the rest of it as well hope that makes sense <laughs> With me, you just look at the calculations, it's obvious what the difference is, but some people, when they see this, they switch off and they want, you know, the, just the, the bare basic layman's terms for these terms. And, you know, sometimes it can get a bit difficult to uh, try and get out of this mindset of, well, duh, and try and explain it in a way that makes sense. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> Fuck, you know. Whew. God, anyone who thinks this is easy, they can give it a go. Fuck me.